Murray estimated the six-foot-tall dinosaur moved about 15 miles an hour. When it wasn't hampered by mud, it could probably run much faster. Albertosaurus and the other connoisseurs were probably not as fast, though most paleontologists agree they could outrun a human. Some estimate they could move up to 40 miles an hour. Just in speed and size alone, these were terrifying creatures, but it was their arsenal of killing tools, including their jaws and powerful necks that inspires awe. Most think of dinosaurs as giant creatures, but many were quite small. It wasn't until the end of the Cretaceous era, 65 million years ago, that the giants truly emerged. Their rise to dominance was destined 200 million years ago when the supercontinent of Pangaea broke in two. The newly forming mountain ranges and inland seaways isolated the dinosaurs into smaller and smaller groups. This geographic isolation is the primary event that makes evolution work. It allows for greater diversity. As the land masses drifted apart, both plants and animals began adapting to their new environments by evolving a variety of strategies for survival. Among the plant eaters, ankylosaurs developed heavy armor and a club tail. Triceratops evolved shields and enormous horns. And the Seismosaurus simply grew huge, as big as five elephants, the largest animal ever to walk the earth. In the game of survival, size proved to be a successful strategy. But when sheer size wasn't enough, some plant eaters found safety in numbers. They formed herds for additional protection. To keep up with their prey, meat-eating dinosaurs grew larger as well. But size wasn't enough. To maintain their advantage, they had to be smarter and faster. If they weren't, they would starve. We know that uh, whenever there's a major change from one group of animals into another group of animals, it usually happens in the meat-eating animals, not in, in the plant-eating animals. And there's a lot of reasons for this. But generally, we find that within a group, there is an influence between the meat eaters and the plant eaters. The plant eaters are trying to get bigger and better arms so that they can protect themselves better against the meat eaters. But the meat eaters have to stay ahead in that arms race. They always have to be a little bit more intelligent, a little bit more faster, because if they're not, they won't eat. The basic strategies of carnosaurs and their plant eating prey were similar throughout the world. But in geographic isolation, curious physical changes were in store. One place to investigate these changes is Argentina. Here, new and unusual connoisseurs are being found. In the past, most dinosaur fossils were unearthed in the northern hemisphere where paleontology originated, and fossils were easily located. Because of the long period of isolation between the two supercontinents, when a new dinosaur is discovered in South America, it often has novel features. Jose Bonaparte of Argentina's National Museum of Natural Science in Buenos Aires has been called the master of the Mesozoic. He has studied dinosaurs in Argentina for three decades, longer than anyone else. In 1985, Dr. Bonaparte discovered a one-ton meat-eating dinosaur called Carnotaurus. His find surprised paleontologists. Conotaurus appeared shortly after the continent split apart. The skull was very tall for its length and strongly built. But its most unusual feature is the two large flat horns jutting out over its eyes. Conosaurs usually have very small horns, if any at all. 
This skull, as you say, is very unusual for a carnivorous dinosaur because it is provided with very large horns. We understand that this horn helps the animal for killing the prey because um, the forearms of this animal are very much reduced. The back of the skull was designed to anchor powerful neck and jaw muscles, the hallmark of carnosaurs. While many of the early predators killed by slashing with claws on their feet, the carnosaurs developed huge sledgehammer heads and jaws so powerful they could easily rip through bone and armor plate. The mouths of many carnosaurs had a special hinge that allowed them to open wider. Carnotaurus had a hinge that enabled it to widen its mouth sideways as well. It was adapted for taking especially large bites, as large as 100 pounds a mouthful. This articulation enabled the animal to widen the mouth, to make this movement. And this movement um, helped for swallowing big pieces of meat, because the animal was able to widen the lower jaw in this part, that is the place for the swallowing of the, of the piece. Carnotaurus puzzle scientists. Despite its huge jaw muscles, its lower jaw is half that of a T-Rex of similar size, and its teeth are more slender. Also, Carnotaurus is significantly smaller than the giants that evolved later, such as Allosaurus, Spinosaurus, and T-Rex. And yet, Carnotaurus is the largest predator ever found in South America and clearly the dominant animal. Its slender lower jaw may not have mattered. It could kill and eat anything it wanted, and it had no enemies. The connoisseurs that came after would further perfect body structures to become truly remarkable killing machines. As paleontologists expand their southward search for fossils, they are discovering connoisseurs that are strikingly different from those previously known. One of the oldest giant connoisseurs was found here, just 400 miles from the South Pole. In 1991, a geologist working in the area discovered a fragment of bone. 